I forgot. <laughs> Here we are live inner circle preview show. We are joining you a week after Thanksgiving. We got a lot to be thankful for, but more yes. importantly, we got metrics to talk about. So Sean, welcome to the inner circle preview show. What's going on this week? Uh, what's going on this week? Well, we're talking about metrics today. Do you mean what has happened? What has happened is we had a beautiful speaking event yesterday put on by the lovely and talented Hugh Zaretsky um, and George Veit and Gruber and others. And we had, um, it was a, a great event. And I think we really disrupted some thoughts around things, including the topic of metrics. And uh, yeah, after Thanksgiving, it's a perfect time to think about this because we use as an example, even though we're talking about being business disruptors, we talk about the architecture in other places. One of the examples we use is if you're one of your big goals for the next quarter is losing weight, haha, uh -huh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, it's coming. Fat season's here, people. Let's, let's look at it and call it what it is. We're all putting them on. Beautiful. But so, metrics we use the example of what you would measure and when you would measure it and all those kinds of things and how to leverage it in the right way so if you want to get into metrics it's a perfect time it's that season it is that season it's the season of metrics it's the end of the year let's review where we've been let's plan out where we're going but guess what you're doing it wrong so i hate to be the bad news bear here um, but let's talk about why bad real news. Quick. did you say the bad news bear i did say that you that's it's no fun to say the bad news bearer. It's no. a mouthful, right? So I say I'm the bad news bear. So here we go. I'm going to roll with it. I'm the bad news bear. I'm going to tell you why your metrics are all wrong and you're looking at the wrong numbers anyway. Um, and it's because the navigation of your business is probably off. I actually, Sean, I didn't even tell you this. I had another bad review call this morning with yeah. somebody and every single one of them goes the same. The navigation is never the focus for the company. And what I ask them is, how has that served you up until this point? And they say, not good. I'm It's so clear because so for us in the harmonious architecture, navigation is is rebranded, if you will, from strategic planning. The, the phrase strategic planning is a little broken and we think about it totally incorrectly as small business owners. So it's the navigation of your business. It's the compass. It's, it's the where are we going and, and why are we doing it? Most people skip that step because they think it's not that important, but in reality, it's the only discipline that touches all nine other disciplines in the and architecture. They do, it, they do it because on some level, first of all, they're tapping into the truth that they know they need to plan something before they do it. Mm -hmm. They don't just pack random lug clothes in luggage and leave and then go, let, hey, vacation started. Let's figure out where we're going as they're two miles down the road. They know that, that they plan first, but then they model how big companies, institutionalized businesses, and other gurus are telling them to do strategic planning, and it's broken. They are not using it right. And so if you follow their model, you're not using it right. And if you've realized that it's not right, and you completely throw it out, which a lot of them do, then you're in the place that you're talking about, Brandon. And, or they follow some hip influencer somewhere who's going to pop on and say, this is how I do strategic planning and it's great. I made $10 million last night in my pajamas. Okay. That's also broken and doesn't serve them. And so then they end up now, uh, forget it. I'm just not, I'm just not doing it. Right. Eventually they get to the place where they're just not going to do it or do it in a way that's under leveraged. And that's terrible. And yeah. that's why we break it apart. And we tell you, here's, here is all you need to do. But it's all you need to do. Like, you've got to figure this out in these areas. And once you do, the power, once we interject it into an overall system for your business, is incredible. The clarity, the focus, the alignment of resources and people towards a common goal is incredible and is incredibly attractive to your clients. Mm -hmm. And Potential. potential employees and partners. It, oh. it goes all the way around. So uh, no plan is a really bad idea. A plan is better than no plan, but really the best way is to follow this model of strategic planning. Go to whatif.com slash navigate. We have a five-day workshop coming up. It is absolutely free to register. We want to get you that plan and get you the clarity so you can launch your business into next year. So today we're going to talk about metrics, but in reality, they don't matter until we know why we're measuring what we're measuring. So let's head on over whatif.com slash navigate. 
get you signed up for that. And we'll break down what metrics for your business are actually going to move the needle. So that's what we're going to jump into today a little bit. It's how we view metrics, but again, it's not for your business in particular. This is higher level metrics. Any client that comes to us and, and immediately says, I know I got to measure things differently or we've got a problem with my metric. They usually don't say that. They either know they're not measuring it. If they're measuring things, they're usually confident that those are the right numbers. And then we show them that maybe they're not. And if they're not measuring anything, they don't really know that it's a problem, probably. But whenever we get there, uh, we say, I'd rather you measure nothing than too much or the wrong things because it's just a wasted effort. If you don't can't read the report that you're somehow generating and make decisions on it in time before your your avatar is negatively impacted, then it is worthless. It is a, it is worse than worthless because you're draining time and energy on it. You're not leveraging it. It'd be better to do nothing. Don't do nothing, but it would be better to do nothing. But don't do nothing. Right? And so once you have the right things to measure that are in the place where you can leverage them to change the impact. So let's use that weight loss journey as an example. If you say, well, I know I, when we do our project management portion of this, um, we say, you, you've got to have like three things, right? That, that is for this sprint. We set that up and here's the three things that tied to my vision that's going to move the dial. I have the resources for them. They've gone through the 4D vetting process. They've made it here. Now we're going to do them. There's these three things. And these are the activities that get on my calendar. We say, okay, great. What is it? So if it's weight loss, I'm going to go to the gym five days a week. I'm going to eat clean three days a week. And I'm going to drink eight glasses of water a day. That's what you measure, not getting on the scale. Because what you'll see is a lot of people are going to do random stuff. Maybe they start counting calories in January because everybody's got a fresh set of let's do it. This is the year, you know, for the for the tenth year in a row. This is going to be the year that I lose the weight. Okay, and they're they're doing a whole bunch of stuff, getting on the count on the uh, scale at the end of the week. That that number is great, but it's a lagging indicator of the efforts that you were doing. It's not a place in time Sunday morning to weigh yourself to have any effect on what you were doing during the week. I'm not also not saying get on the scale every single morning because it really should be that once a week at the end of the week. What you should be measuring is how well did I today do on my I've got to eat clean? Uh, I don't know. Does a Snickers bar count? I mean, it wasn't on the floor. So eat clean to find it. You're, you're dodging and you know it. Put the Snickers down. And now you've realized, though, on Monday, I kind of screwed that up. Now Tuesday. I can do something differently because I was checking my progress. That's the measure I should be checking. That's a really simplistic uh, uh, analogy, but everybody gets it. And you can clearly see it before we muddy it all up by saying, well, what should I be measuring for my business? Revenue is the only thing that matters, right? Well, let's, let's tie that to business because weight is a really good example where everybody in the world understands what that is, right? We all have a weight. And a lot of us try to influence that weight in one way or another pretty often. So in business, it's the equivalent to me for weight is revenue. Yeah. It's a number that's irrelevant, I, but it is the most commonly measured number in business. I personally can't wrap my head around it, but for and I want to hear your take on it too, because you, you've worked at companies with revenues in the hundreds of billions and I've, I've worked on the smaller end, but that to me seems like for small business owners and entrepreneurs, that is the one focus people always have. And I never understood that because what you're missing by focusing on revenue is at the most obvious level, the expenses. Well, if your revenue and your expenses equal each other, I don't care what your revenue is. It's not working. So what's, what's your take on, on looking at revenue really at all? Um, the reason I think the reason so many entrepreneurs think it's so important is because they see institutionalized businesses making it so important, but they have different reasons for why that's so important. They have shareholders to think about. I mean, if they're for any company that's taken on any money from someone else is now beholden to that other person's idea of who and what you are, and they may not be so bought into you effectuating your vision or your mission 
as they are a return on their investment. So their metrics are all through a different lens. Mm -hmm. It's from the lens of those stakeholders who are there because they've given you some revenue or they have some kind of ownership interest or there is right there, the stock, the, 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 the market, right? Shareholders, whatever that is, they have a different lens that you don't have as an entrepreneur. So it's not as important. Is it important? Oh my God. He just said revenue isn't important. <laughs> Didn't say that, but, but also think of this. If you're focused on revenue, you're chasing dollars. That allows you to be in the space where you could compromise your core values or your brand promise. Who does the revenue matter to? Nate, show me one person who's gotten another client because they heard what their revenue number is. Well, that's the kind of revenue you're pulling? Well, that's the kind of person I want to get also give my money to because it sounds like a cool club. Why would that matter to anybody? What they want to know is... Why does McDonald's put on their sign over oh, this many billion burgers served? Because they sell burgers and I'm looking for a burger. And they're like, we've sold a lot of them. Well, I guess I'm gonna go there. That's the whole point of that. They're not just saying, look at us, we sold a lot of burgers. They're saying, if you're looking for a burger and you think experience equals quality, we've done it a lot. Now you could argue not well a lot. Someone might argue that. I would never. But someone might say that, right? There's no, but there's no statement of quality there. Not nine billion awesome tasting or healthy burgers. They didn't say that. They just, okay. So because they're understanding that the metric that matters to you as the consumer is number of people like me who got a result, number of people like me who are happy, number of lives you've changed because you say you do that, number of dollars saved for clients because you tax professionals say that you do that right number of businesses you have that's speaking to what my need is and your ability to solve it that's a metric that matters if my clients love speed of delivery i should be looking at my value chain to say here's how quickly i get things speed means something to them so when I'm looking to automate processes, when I'm looking to measure things, I want to be looking at that dial to see how fast, how fast, how fast. FedEx is tracking in every warehouse and any every distribution center, things down to the second. How quickly can we move these packages? Because that's their job. That's why we want it. I don't care about their revenue. I care about how often I can reliably trust them to get a package from here to there in the fastest, most seamless way. That's the brand promise. That's what they stand for. They better be measuring the hell out of it and automating it at every chance they get. Yeah. So I think that's, that's really the essence of this whole episode is metrics that will actually move the needle in your business. It is not one specific measure or, you know, are we monitoring marketing? Are we monitoring sales? It's what's going to maximize the, the end user value. What's your brand promise? What's going to fulfill your brand promise? That's what you should be measuring. And I don't mean measure nothing else. That's again, don't, don't hear us say that. Don't hear us say revenue is not important. No, but if you're focusing on revenue, you're focusing on profit. That's what's important to you. What's important to your customer and, and even to your employees, they should be part of your end user group because you serve them as the leader. So measure things that are going to get the result that you promised as your company. And now to make it apples to apples, in case, lest you've heard me say revenues isn't, isn't as important as customer satisfaction, I didn't say that either. I didn't say customer satisfaction or net promoter score should be your, that's also a lagging indicator. Your revenue, your revenue, you look at that in the same, that's the same point in time. So I'm looking at, when I'm looking at revenue data is around the same time that I'm looking at customer satisfaction, right? Things that have come to completion, end of the line. Let's just get our heads around this because if that at that point somewhere revenue is off the charts, but and customer satisfaction is in the toilet, I go, wait, wait, what are we doing? Who's doing something to make a lot of money at the expense of brand loyalty and costing us raving fans? Those, right? That's a different analysis when I'm sitting there. When I'm sitting over here, I say, if customer satisfaction is more important from the customer standpoint than revenue, 
now let's look at what goes in. What are the drivers of customer satisfaction, which is different from every business. Some people want speed. Some people want quality, right? You can't have everything in the, in the three of, you can't be cheap, fast, or of good quality. You can't have all of it together. You've got to pick somewhere to be on that triangle. You can only have two of the three at any one time. So what are the drivers of your customer satisfaction? Those are the things then you have to measure much earlier in the chain that of that value delivery chain so that you can have an impact on revenue and customer satisfaction where it matters. Not looking at it afterwards and doing a post-mortem to see where did we screw it up. Yeah, we actually, we don't have time today to go into that, the magic, the holy trinity of faster, cheaper, better quality. Um, I actually did find a way that you could be all three. We'll dive into that on the inner circle. So if you want to hear about it, come join us there. It's, but it's Brandon's Kobayashi Maru. He didn't like the question, so he right he changed the test. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> right. No, it's it's an interesting way to look at it. Um. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely dive into that. But I do want to go back to a little bit the balance between lagging and leading indicators because that's what this is all hinting at. What for you? What's an important balance of uh, leading versus lagging and just a quick explanation on that. If you don't know what those are, please go look them up. Um, but for when we break down the five-year vision into your, your quarterly sprints, your, your 12 week sprints, we would like to have leading indicators as your action steps. So what are you going to do to achieve this outcome? Those are leading, but for you, when you're reviewing metrics, where do you balance the leading versus lagging? So you can see what's performing, but then also measure what will happen so the balance is the least minimal i am collecting the the, the min the least number of metrics i need to have the biggest impact because we're trying to work smarter not harder and so it also depends on where i am in the this review of the things Right. So there is something I would review every day. If there are things that are daily activities that will have a big impact, take weight loss again. What I eat today is going to affect that number on Sunday. And then I'm going to have a lagging indicator, a, a, a aggregate number at some point. So if it's weight loss for the month, I'm going to be doing some reviews at the end of the week to say, I did really crappy on water. I hit the other things, but water, I, now I know what my number is. I'm either happy with it or not for the week, still trying to hit that monthly goal. Now, next month, how can I make sure that I'm doing that? Well, easy, I'm gonna put it on my calendar because I don't do anything if it's on my calendar because that is the that is the place where I have my time in a vault. And I right, take from there when I need to, only when I have to. And so I'm gonna put on there, drink water, and it'll pop up with six reminders during the day on my phone, easy peasy. I've, con I've conditioned myself now like Pavlov's dog, this thing says water and I drink it. Chug it down, done. And now I track, did that work the next week? If it did, great. Change management just happened. We we normalize that change. It's now part of the routine. We don't think about it again. We free up that headspace and we're executing on our goals now and we're seeing the results. And if the numbers keep coming off the scale in the way that we anticipated it to, when we do the lagging review, all the better. So I would say if you need three things to measure every day, on these, and by measure, I mean, it's, it can be quick. It can be easy, right? And then do a review at whatever time intervals make sense for you and your business. I think, you know, it should be 80% of the things you're looking at are the stuff that are those point in time metrics. And then 20% of them are aggregate lagging indicators that you would have to take some time to understand and see if, you know, you've got to give yourself enough time to see the effects from what you've been doing. That's good advice. So you heard it here first from Bobby Boucher, Sean Delaney, who's drinking his water. <laughs> uh, we have too much fun here. So, all right, water boy, we, uh, we're we going to sign off for this episode, but that's that's the way to look at your metrics. So you don't get the H2O. <laughs> okay, good, good. We're on the same page. Um, that's the way you're going to look at your metrics. It's If anyone comes to you and says, these are the three things you need to, to move the needle in your business, um, they're lying to you and they probably specialize in that particular area. And those metrics are important to them. So figure out what's important to your business. What's going to get you closer to your vision. If you want to figure out how we break this down, come join us in the inner circle. Um, but more importantly, 
if you want to get a plan in place to actually figure out what metrics are going to move you closer to that end goal, come join us on the upcoming five-day workshop, whatif.com slash navigate. An Sean, hour a day. An hour a day. You it's a five day. With one, hours a day. one hour a day. Hey, mm -hmm. you can hang out with us for eight hours a day. That's cool. But the workshop is only one. I don't recommend it. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> but all right, that's enough of our nonsense for one week. We'll see you next week on the preview show. Hope to see you on the inner circle soon. We will see you there. Go do a thing.